Let's create a new Gradle project inside of IntelliJ. So the first thing, let's go up to the upper right, click on new project. This opens up the new project wizard and allows you to create pretty much any project that you want. Inside the left hand side under new project, we have Java selected. We're just gonna create a Java project. From here, let's give it a name. I'll name it Gradle project. And underneath that, we can put it at some sort of location. Now, I just leave it at the default, but you can change this to anything that you want. I also have create Git repository checked. I highly suggest doing that so that you have a source control that you can actually go back on if you need to. Under build system, we're obviously doing Gradle. Under JDK, we can select 17. That's just what I'm gonna do. We could select any JDK that you want though. Under Gradle domain specific language, we can either choose Kotlin or Groovy. Groovy is the recommended choice because I think the majority of Gradle projects utilize Groovy for their build.gradle files. And I would just suggest doing that. So I'm just gonna leave it as the default. Now I have add sample code selected and this will just add the boilerplate main function that we have inside of like every Java application. I don't have generate code with onboarding tips because I mean, basically this is the onboarding. I'm, I'm teaching you how to do these things. So under advanced settings, we can also select a Gradle distribution. We could either select the wrapper that IntelliJ just automatically gives to you, or we can select a local installation on our computer. Now I would recommend selecting wrapper because that's the actual recommendation inside of the Gradle documentation. They actually just want you to use the wrapper so that you could transport this to any computer and be able to run it right off the bat without having to install anything extra. Under Gradle version, we can unselect auto select and select any version that we want. Now I just keep auto select on because this just selects pretty much the most recent version of Gradle. And for use these settings for future projects, I just keep that selected as well because pretty much every time that you're gonna be creating a Gradle project, you're probably gonna be using the same project settings. So underneath group ID and artifact ID, now these are the Maven repository group ID and artifact ID. The group ID is usually the company domain, but backwards. So like instead of underscore software.com, I have com dot underscore software. And then the artifact ID is usually the name of the project. So I just have the Gradle project and I'll keep that as is. So now we can hit create. Now that it's created, we have this menu where we can now see the main function. And this was the sample code that it generated. It's just a simple print line for hello world. And we'll run this a little bit later, but on the left-hand side, I wanna talk about some of the files that were generated as well as some of the folders. So this first folder up here is the Gradle folder, and this contains the Gradle wrapper.jar. This is the actual running jar that allows you to do and run any of the tasks inside of your Gradle build file. We also have the Gradle wrapper properties file, and this just contains some information about the jar. Now you can also define some properties here under the Gradle folder that will actually alter the way that the Gradle wrapper runs. But for now, we just leave it as the default. Next, we have our source, and this just contains our source code. Inside of here, we have a main Java, and then here is our main class, which we have seen when it first generated and opened up inside of IntelliJ. We also have a resources folder, which doesn't have anything in it. And we also have a test folder, which also doesn't have anything in it, but we could add our tests here. Since we selected to use a Git version control system, we also get this git ignore file, which is pre-populated with some basic Gradle folders and files that we can just ignore. Underneath that, we have the build.gradle file, and this is our groovy file that we can add any of the tasks that we want to add in order to run our application properly. So we could add build tasks, we could add test tasks, we could add an application task, we can add anything here. Inside a Gradle project.iml, this is just an IntelliJ specific file that defines a few things about our environment and our project itself. Then the Gradle W file, which is a shell script. This just runs the Gradle wrapper jar inside of our wrapper folder, but it's also like setting up some environment variables and some specific things like options for our Java to run the Gradle wrapper properly. We also have the settings.gradle file, which includes things like your root project name or your build cache configurations or your root directory and anything that is used for all of the Gradle processes that you're gonna be running. So now that I've talked about all of the files, let's actually go over to the build.gradle file and let's actually run uh, the application. So here, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to add an ID for application. And this is just adding the application tasks to Gradle. So let's also add the task here. We'll call it application. 
We'll open it up. We'll set the main main class dot set to our main class and we can auto populate it there. And so now you see that it's grayed out. We actually need to add it to Gradle so that IntelliJ knows that it's uh, available. So we go up here and we cl click this little icon and this will just load the local Gradle changes that I've just made. So now that they're loaded, you can see that this is now blue and we can open up in our Gradle tool menu. We can then open up the tasks and then we can see that we have this application task, which we didn't have before, we just added it. We can now click the down arrow, open that up, and then double click on run, and it should run our application. So here now you can see that we have the hello world. And that's how you run it. So we could also, since we have the wrapper and we have these uh, bat files, batch file and shell script, we can actually run it in the command line as well. So if we open up the terminal here, we can actually type out the Gradle script. Since I'm using Gradle W dot bat because I'm on a Windows machine, I use that and then I could do run and we click it and now it should run successfully. And you can see the hello world again. Now you can run any task that you want to run. So I don't just have to do run, I could just build and it will build the application. And that's as easy as it gets. So let's open up the run configuration and see what it's doing. So when we open this, we can see on the left-hand side that we're actually using a Gradle run configuration, and we have this new one that IntelliJ automatically created since we ran the application run uh, task. And over here on the right side, we can actually change this task to anything that we want. We could change it from run to say build, for instance, or anything, and we can add our arguments here as well. So say we wanna do run, but we also want the warning mode to be all so that we get notified of any issues within our run. Uh, now, we also have the Gradle project where we select which project we want. You can have multiple sub projects inside of one IntelliJ project. And when you do that, you can select a different project that you might wanna run. And you can add that to the build settings inside of the Gradle build file. We can also define environment variables and that's just anything that you want. Uh, we also have a lot of other options, including adding JVM options and a lot of other things in here that you could play around with. So now we have this, let's hit apply and then let's hit run. So now nothing should really change. We should just get the same output. We added that argument, but there aren't any issues. So we just get the same output that we got earlier and we get that hello world. So that is how you create and run a Gradle project inside of IntelliJ.